Why don't we today discover and actually experience how to be rid of any problem whatsoever? And quickly at that. Let's get on with it. And equally as we do this, we will hear why a problem, again, it can be any problem of any category, anywhere, and for any seeming reason, sticks in experience. Why it will not yield despite a lot of spiritual reading and listening and pondering and being in silence, why does a problem not yield? So let's go through this. And you're ready after the first two classes we've had. You're ready. The kingdom of life is spirit. Alone. And that means that any life is the spirit alive. There is no other type of life. We know that. And life or the synonym being or awareness is the totality of that which we call our experience and far beyond as well. In other words, there isn't a being in an experience, there is being, being experience. All one. We heard of oneness yesterday. You are that oneness. And so wherever you go in your oneness, there you have the whole of your oneness. Your oneness meaning the oneness, God. The truth, the only being, the only one, that being spirit. So you could go right now with me, let's go together, to the moon. And there you have the whole of God, the whole of truthful being. Right there, all of it. And from the moon we could peer out into the universe and right over there, a quarter of a million Miles away in our sense of measurement, there is Earth and she looks gorgeous. From up there we can't see all the trouble and strife, nor hear it. There is the gorgeous, divine Earth. And we can look out at the stars as far as we wish to. We can even visit the stars visit anywhere and wherever that may be, there we find the whole of the oneness of being that we are. And the whole of this experience we are experiencing is. All is one. All is the omnipresence of oneness, of God. And... God is, and therefore oneness is, spirit. 100% spirit and nothing else. So you are 
the spiritual being. There is no other type. Whether we are aware of it or not, there is no other type. There is only spiritual being. There's no other type of being. And we are observing our spiritual experience or spiritual universal world and absolutely everything in it, of it, happening around it is also actually, despite appearance, spirit and 100% spirit. And more than that, at every grain or particle or cell or atom or subatom of it and beyond, the whole of spirit exists right there. Not in some impractical way, because spirit is forever manifested and real and tangible and demonstrated. It's the one reality. It's all visible. The whole kingdom of God is visible even from a grain. If we were to go inside a grain of sand in spiritual Awareness, which is far more than an intellectual thing, you know that. It's, I should say, if we were to go into a grain of sand as spiritual being, then there the whole of the kingdom of God is perfectly visible, tangible and real and infinite. We would never know we were inside a grain of sand. And indeed we're not. If we were to go into an atom as spiritual being, we would never know we're in, a, in an atom because there the whole of the kingdom of God is perfectly visible and tangible and infinite. If we were to go into the subatomic realm of awareness, we would never know it because there, again, the whole of the kingdom of God is perfectly visible, tangible, fully manifested, as spiritual being. Now, spiritual being And remember now, this refers to the entirety of experience. Spiritual being is entirely fulfilled forever, for eternity, and at every single moment of its experience, with and as spirit. Hear that well. Spiritual being is fulfilled with an as spirit. And it cannot be unfulfilled, not even for a microsecond, because spirit is always whole and complete and cannot be divided, separated, made incomplete. It's absolutely impossible that a bit of spirit, a bit of this oneness that we are, can fall away or be over there instead of over here. It's absolutely impossible. Omnipresence cannot be separated, divided. It doesn't exist in time and space. There is no causation, there is no effect. Spirit is. And that is, is forever whole and complete, and in utter fulfillment. So now, spiritual being never has need of matter. Spiritual being is already fulfilled, and forever fulfilled, and ultimately fulfilled, and that word sounds so ridiculous to me. Infinitely Fulfilled. It is the living fulfillment of God itself, being itself, world, universe, infinity, itself, omnipresence, itself. Needing 
nothing. Because it already is it and has it. Everything infinitely. And as spiritual being, everything indeed is infinite, is omnipresent. Spiritual being doesn't have to sit and meditate or learn or sit in silence. Spiritual being is silent. And spiritual being is omnipresence, is infinity. And it's all right here. So nothing is ever needed. Nothing of matter is ever needed. Spiritual being does not need a physical body in order to enjoy and have the freedom and purpose of body. Spiritual being is body. Spirit is body. Spiritual being does not have need of dollars. It doesn't work. It doesn't give in our sense of giving. It doesn't pay. It doesn't gain. It doesn't go out and buy things or need supply in order to buy things. It doesn't have utilities. It doesn't have couches and chairs and tables. Spiritual being is the whole of fulfilled being as spirit, there being nothing else. Spiritual being is always fulfillment itself, in need of nothing. You catch that? And actually, Well, you see, here's the whole can of worms because we fall into the trap of seeking matter from God, seeking good matter from God or spirit. And because spiritual being, even if we consider our individual spiritual being, and believe me, we can seek our individual spiritual being and witness all the fulfillment we could ever, ever want or need individually. Because, you see, in seeking our spiritual being, we're never seeking personal being and its sense of fulfillment. We've lifted out and realized that actually this poor sense I'm having that makes me believe I'm a personal being with personal this, that and the rest and a whole bunch of personal needs to fulfill is not what I really am at all. I am spirit. And as soon as we realize our spiritual nature, our spiritual truth, then we have the awareness of infinity, not anything personal or local. We have the awareness of omnipresence, never any local or personal or formed amount or thing or presence or being. We are now in awareness of infinity, omnipresence, incorporeality, oneness. Go deep in you right now, which really just means before your thought, before your belief. Go inside of you right now in terms of purity, in terms of oneness, and realize gently that this very second you are spiritual being and that very spiritual being you are is already completely and utterly fulfilled in absolutely every way of fulfillment or of experience, of the fulfillment of experience. You are not missing or lacking anything at all. Nothing. But in order to feel this right now, you've got to get behind your thought. Leave your thought and your belief, your awareness, out there somewhere. 
can come in here and just begin to feel the oneness of the truth of your being. Realize the truth that your true being, fully existent right now and forever, is whole and complete right now. Let's put it in more practical terms for you, but don't slip out of spirit. We're speaking of your truth and my truth and the worlds and universes truth, which is spirit. In practical terms, you are not short of or lacking or experiencing tired or old or ill or diseased or injured life or body. It's impossible. You are the eternal life and body itself, which is spirit. And the whole of life is the whole of your life. The whole of life itself, and because life is always embodied, life itself is your body. The spiritual being with the spiritual body, all one, one and the same thing. You are not short of, you are not deprived of, you are not struggling for, what has been called supply. You are supply itself. And you have supply. You have the resource of the whole of infinity. Right here and now. You don't need matter. We'll talk about matter in a moment. You don't need matter as spiritual being because you are utterly whole and complete always as spiritual being. Do you catch this? This is the important thing now to realize. Very quickly, as a quick tangent, matter is an image of, a concept of, a form of, But you see, spirit is the original, is the master, is the whole. Everything else is a little fragmentary form of, or image of, or experience of that which is the whole, that which is infinite. If we're holding a dollar, or we're experiencing a breath of life, or a step of life, or we're experiencing a moment of love, or a moment of giving our talent, our expression, our art our work, then what we're experiencing is a tiny fragment of that which is the infinite whole of spirit itself as the whole of experience. So that'll help you just for a second to forget about matter and realize that what it really is is spirit, but where spirit is and how much spirit there is, is your very spiritual being, your I. When you say I, when you think I, you're actually speaking of the whole of your kingdom, your spiritual kingdom, the finished kingdom. So to paraphrase our great master, come with me right now into 
paradise. Come with me into your spiritual awareness and there, instantly, you're free in infinite fulfillment, unconditional fulfillment, omnipresent fulfillment. You can now let go as you come with me to paradise, to your spiritual self, your spiritual truth. You can let go of absolutely every concern, every effort you're having to make, every worry you may have, every fear, every struggle, every sense of needing to achieve something, get something, balance something. Let it go right now and rest with me, with truth, with God in and as your spiritual wholeness. And realize right now I am and I have the whole of all, the whole of God, the whole of everything that can ever be, the whole of everything that ever has been, ever is right now, and ever will be, right up into eternity, in terms of experience. You are and you have all of it, right here, right now, and all of it is spirit. And so you are, here and now, utterly and eternally fulfilled spiritual being. Feel the glorious peace of your resting in your truthful being. The reason it feels peaceful is because it is. It's whole. Only wholeness is peaceful. If there's anything ajar or discordant or missing, lacking, needed, then peace can't exist. It's not peaceful, it's worried, it's concerned, it's incomplete. And so realize that every time you feel the peace filling your senses, it's because you're now literally experiencing your whole truth. You've achieved it, you've found your truth. And you've been still enough so that that truth can actually be experienced. And the experience of peace happening within is more tangible, more real, more visible than anything material can ever be. Materiality seems to be more real, more tangible, more visible, only because we've come to believe in it as being something of its own self. But now that belief is dissolving. 
Every hour it is dissolving for all of you who are on this class and on previous classes. Every hour. Because all that is present for you is the light of truth and all that is filling your senses is the light of truth. Wherever you look, or wherever you go, or whatever you do, as spiritual being, stay right there in your spirit. You're right here in your spiritual kingdom. Wherever you look, wherever you go, whatever you do, in your spiritual kingdom, is already whole and complete when you get there. Because wherever you can observe, or wherever you can be or go, or whatever you can be doing, is omnipresent, is the whole of spirit being that moment or that hour. There are no moments and there are no hours in spirit. But just to make it very practical, whatever you are observing, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, is always complete because it's spirit. And spirit is indivisible. Spirit is always fulfilled. There's nothing ever lacking at all. No knowledge. As soon as you... In fact, before you even know you seek some knowledge or wisdom, it's there as you. You are suddenly being that knowledge or that wisdom. Before you know that you need these resources, all the resources are there. Before you meet up or think you need to meet up with another being, that being is already there. Before you prepare yourself to give the next class, to serve the next customer, to express the next talent, to provide the next product or service. All these words are quite nonsensical in spirit, but it's practical, so we'll stick with it for the moment. But before you observe or do or be involved in anything whatsoever, the fulfillment of it is already there. Because omnipresence is always, of course, already there. There is only omnipresence. So whatever the experience, omnipresence is the fulfillment of it. Wherever the place... Omnipresence is the fulfillment of it. The utter, divine, complete, heavenly fulfillment of it. Everywhere, every place, everything, every being is infinite and 
is the body of, the presence of, the being of omniscience, wisdom, joy. We do not even know what our fellow beings are or our experience of things and places and conditions are until we experience them spiritually. And then everything, as Shakespeare said, the rocks will teach you if you know their spirit. The very rocks will give you a sermon. The very rocks will show you so much joy and truth that all you can do is kneel down in front of it and be in endless gratitude. The very leaves, the very colours, the very fragrances, the very insects, the very beaches and the sand that fills them. The very cell and atom is the body of omniscience and will teach you and will comfort you, is your friend, your love, And there is no matter in your kingdom whatsoever. And you have no need of matter whatsoever. And yet... You have the whole of life, you have the whole of body, you have the whole of supply, resource, idea, wisdom, relationship, friend, community, country, world, universe. And yet none of it is matter. It is all spirit. It is all infinite. It is all omnipresence. It is all omniscience itself. It is the one presence, one power. There is no bad. There is nothing unavailable. There is nothing away from you, therefore nothing delayed. Every experience is instantaneous experience, instantaneous fulfillment. Every expression is instantaneous fulfillment for all concerned because all is one. It's already fulfilled. And there's not a particle of matter anywhere to be found. And you don't need it. Now, this is the being you are right now. And this is the world and universe you have right now. And if you were able to, right now, observe your world through a completely unconditioned mind, you would experience just what we have heard here and now as what appears to be your world of matter. But your mind, your sense of mind, is not unconditioned, is it? Your mind is unconditioned and you can't do anything about it. Remember, what we're calling your mind is the one mind. Just in the same way, what we're calling your being, your life, is the one being and life. There is no personal being nor life, nor mind, nor anything. There is no personal body, no personal dollar, no personal relationship, no personal green leaves and flowers and fruits and gardens and yards. Mind is 
forever unconditioned and cannot be any other way because it is God and nothing can change or condition God. It's very simple. God is the only presence, the only power. Therefore, nothing exists even that could come along and plant itself in the mind or in experience or in being. Nothing exists. But as we've always heard, even if it did exist, it could not be a greater power than the one almighty power. Therefore, of course, could not affect or change, discolor, filter, lessen God. So mind is forever unconditioned. And so go right back, don't slip out of your spiritual awareness. Come right back so that you're in spiritual wholeness, infinitely in spiritual wholeness. Wherever you go, whatever you touch, whatever you do, whatever you think, is always whole and complete. Before you get there, it is whole and complete. No experience, no expression, no service, no giving, no love. No place, no home, is ever anything but fulfillment itself of whatever that place is, whatever that experience, whatever that thought, whatever that expression, that giving, that purpose is. You can do it. You have the freedom of infinity, you see. You are the infinity of being. So you can do anything. Choose. Do anything. Start a new career tomorrow. Doesn't make any difference. Start it now. Start it before class ends, because if it appeals to you, if you're feeling the impulse of a new career, a new expression, guess what? That is the impulse of truth pushing you to be that expression, because it's more your truth. And you have the freedom, you're the infinity of being and experience itself. You have the freedom. And as you step into it in truth, which means in spirit entirely, then, again, don't slip out. I feel some of you slipping out and thinking of this or interpreting this in terms of matter. Don't do that. Come back here into spirit and stay there. Don't be the prodigal. Don't be a little child running away from home. Come back home. Except this home is paradise. There are no chores being asked of you here. And so whatever you do, whatever it is, you can't fail because that which you are doing is omnipresence itself. That which you are expressing is omnipresence itself. And remember, omnipresence can never be divided from itself, separated from itself. It's all one. So that which you're doing already has all its customers, its clients, its satisfaction, its fulfillment, its result. That's what omnipresence is. That's what fulfillment is. Everything is completely done, finished, complete wherever you go and whatever you do and whatever you think. So you have the freedom of your life. Take it. Accept it. Go off and be free right now. But remember, what you are and what your life is, therefore, everything you can do, everything you can give, every purpose of you, every place you can be, is spirit and spiritual. This is the key. You mustn't fall out of your spiritual awareness, because only in and as spirit are you whole and complete. And only in and as spiritual awareness and living can you evidence that wholeness and completeness everywhere you go and with everything you do. 
But the moment you step out, you're lost. And the reason is that our so-called material experience is instantaneously just a tiny, tiny fragment of that which it really is, which is spirit. Do you see that? So if we step out and we start thinking in terms of matter and then start desiring more or less matter, then we're completely lost. That's number one. And number two, we're only ever able to experience, even if we have all the world's goods piled up right here where we are, that is only a tiny fragment of what it really is, which is the infinity of good that is spirit itself. Okay, back to spirit, looking through or experiencing through the unconditioned mind. Here we have the experience of perfect, fulfilled form. Everything perfect. No bad anywhere. No lack anywhere. Nothing missing anywhere. Only one power operative and perfectly practically and visibly and tangibly operative. And that is the power of omnipresence, the power of good, the power of love and life and joy and union and one. Through the unconditioned mind, spirit sees itself as form. Omnipresence sees itself as form. And it doesn't matter whether the conceptual idea, the multitudinous idea of spirit or experience of spirit is probably an easier way to understand it. It doesn't matter if that experience of one through mind appears as one form or a million forms or five forms or 10,000 forms or 36 forms. It doesn't make any difference. All form is always whole and complete and fulfilled. All being is always whole and complete and fulfilled in every way. Because actually every way is just the one way, which is oneness, which is always whole and complete and fulfilled. So I spend a minute bathing in the unconditioned mind of pure spirit alone. No matter exists in the unconditioned mind at all. Therefore, no thought of matter exists in the unconditioned mind. The unconditioned mind only has unconditioned thought. And that is spiritual thought. You still feeling the peace of it? Which means, we're getting yeses here, which means that you're still at one with your whole truth. Right here and now, as you're feeling the peace, you have the whole of your fulfilled experience. This very minute, and in the most practical and real way, or ways. Because spirit is always utterly fulfilled in every way.
Again, do not think in terms of matter. So right now we have pure spiritual being, utterly and infinitely, eternally fulfilled, the omnipresence of the whole of being, the whole of God, as the very being you are. Observing or experiencing itself through the unconditioned mind with unconditioned thought. Be free in thought right now. Don't be afraid of thought. Don't be afraid of any thoughts. People are so afraid of wrong thinking. Well, thinking has no power. Thought has no power. Do what you like with it. It can't harm you. It can't delay your good. Does that surprise you? Bad thinking, wrong thinking, material thinking, can't delay your good. That's not the root of the problem. Thought has no power. Only God is power. So do what you like with your thought. Never be afraid of it. There's only one thought, and that's God. Our interpretation of it is up to us. But there's no power in our interpretation. So here we have pure and whole, omnipresent spiritual being observing or experiencing itself through the unconditioned mind and free in its unconditioned thought, spiritual thought. Think spirit right now. Just think about your spiritual being, just as we have been. Go ahead by yourself. Think about your spiritual being, whole and complete, infinite, omnipresent. My whole universe is tingling as I feel you all thinking spiritually. Very beautiful. Now, observe all the formation of your unconditioned mind and realize that there is no matter in it whatsoever. 
probably first do it with your eyes closed. Have a look through your unconditioned mind and observe all the formation of your world. And realize that even though somebody has described this formation as being material, they were wrong. Or physical, or of matter. They were wrong. There is no matter. There is only spirit. And as you observe the formation of your world through your unconditioned mind, you have a world of unconditioned form, all spiritual. not needing any matter whatsoever. If we were to take aerodynamics and shine it through a grid, that somehow made it into a formation that appeared to be gridded, appeared to be now a number of gridded cubes or squares or whatever it may be. If we were to do that, so that behind the grid here we have the invisible principle of aerodynamics itself, the oneness, the omnipresence of aerodynamics itself. And we're shining it through the grid or the filter, that in appearance separates and divides and grids it. So now we have a seeming formation of gridded or formed or blocked or cubed or whatever it may be, aerodynamics. Is it not true, because aerodynamics is omnipresent and aerodynamics is indivisible and inseparable from itself, so only the whole of aerodynamics exists, no matter what we do with it, is it not true that on the other side of that grid or veil, all the forms of aerodynamics we're witnessing are actually, each and every one, nothing but the whole of aerodynamics? Is that not true? And yet, if we were to believe the appearance of this multitudinous formation, we could well believe that there is not the whole of aerodynamics at every point. Because the formation, just taken at surface value, appears to be incomplete of various parts of itself, or quantities of itself. But we would be able to look at that formation and realize uh, uh, that's untrue. The whole of aerodynamics is at every place in this formation because you cannot divide or separate aerodynamics. Aerodynamics is omnipresent. So despite appearance, I can assure you, my friends or my students, 
that the whole of aerodynamics is right there. And when we know that, you could put a plane anyway, even though the formation looks incomplete or lacking or ill or discordant, and that plane would fly because the whole of aerodynamics is right there everywhere. Yes or no? All right. And this is our experience as spiritual being, whole and complete and omnipresent, infinite, eternal, with nothing but spirit, never in need of matter, never in need of a physical body or a physical organ function, part of the body, never in need of physical dollars or physical avenues or customers, clients, patients, students, never in need of physical love or physical friendship or physical companionship, condition or place, but 100% spiritual, fully complete and whole, always, nothing we can do about it. That's what spirit is and how spirit experiences itself. As spiritual being observes its experience through the unconditioned mind, that is what we have, unconditioned form. And by the degree that we can live the unconditioned mind and experience, which means the spiritual experience, by the degree that we know that all is spirit, despite the way it may appear to be, and despite what is deeply ingrained in the collective awareness or belief, is the degree and the speed at which everywhere we go or everything we observe or everything we do is witnessed as the completeness that it actually is, but now as the image or the copy or the experience of completeness as form, as being, as body, as activity, as business, as finances, as love. Now then, when we still have belief, and I am being told over and over to make sure that you stay in spiritual awareness, spiritual completeness, spiritual beingness and experience, where no matter is needed whatsoever, and indeed no matter exists whatsoever. You heard that, didn't you? As we're observing the formation that we call the world, actually we're observing not matter, because matter doesn't exist, only spirit exists. So we're observing spirit that has been wrongly labelled as material or physical or matter. It is spirit and only spirit. All right, so... Keep that in awareness. Before we go, another step, let me ask you, do you ever have need of a geek and gunk? Have you ever needed one of them? Or many of them? No, you haven't, because they don't exist. And matter does not exist. And if we think we need it, we're wrong. We don't. It doesn't exist. It's a false sense. And a geek and gunk is a false sense after you've had a sharp knock on the head, I'm sure. But we do not need geek and gunks because they do not exist. We do not need matter. It doesn't exist. All right, it served its purpose. I'll probably be embarrassed about that for years to come. But it served its purpose. 
All right, now belief. is experience. If we believe something, not if we think about it. Thought is completely innocent and impotent. It has no power whatsoever, no influence whatsoever. And this will become clear in a minute as we explore this. However, belief indeed influences experience. And belief indeed is a believed, real experience. Whatever we believe is going to be and will remain experienced until we stop believing it. And you can observe this in your experience. If you think flippant thoughts, unserious thoughts, then they really don't bother you and they really don't turn up in your life, either good or bad. But if you have a belief about something and then think about it, it haunts you. It stays in your life, again, either good or bad. Does it not? Now then, remember what we're actually, as a being, and what mind is actually, and what experience is actually, with nothing that can change it, is the whole of God. And experience is always whole and complete, and nothing can change it because it's spirit and nothing can change spirit. It is omnipresence, and nothing can change omnipresence. Nothing. And so, even though we are in the very presence of utter and absolute invariable fulfillment, before we get there, it is fulfilled. Even though this is the truth, and the real truth, the practical, visible and tangible truth, belief will veil that fulfillment of experience and present to us what seems to be incomplete or ill or diseased, in pain, struggling experience. The quick and infallible way, and you'll understand this if you've taken in what we've heard today, the quick and infallible way to witness any and every problem or lack or illness, disease, insecurity, injustice, whatever it may be, war, harmonize, become truthful. The quick way to clear belief, which is the only aspect of your experience that is veiling from you that which is actually here and now whole and complete. It is just belief, and then the entertainment of it, which is thought, the quick and infallible way is to withdraw that thinking, that belief thinking about that which you're believing. So let's say that we believe we have a disease or we believe we have, well, let's do one at a time. We believe we have a disease and we've gone off and we've found its name and its type and its aggression and the speed of its aggression, and what it's likely to do to us, and so on and so on. There is our belief. As we hold it in thought, and we can all check ourselves, whatever it is we believe that is troubling us, limiting us, giving us fear, what are we fearful of? What are we making all this effort to correct? You will discover that your thought is filled with it by the degree it's troubling you. There are minor troubles and medium troubles and major troubles in our belief. And those that are major fill our thinking. I remember my thinking was full of disease 
And the only relief I was able to get before I woke up was sleep. Sometimes I could distract my thinking. I could go off to the cinema or I could get involved in a book. And the more and more I got involved in truth books, I found that my thinking changed from that of the problem to that of truth. And as I learned about pondering and contemplating truth, in other words, as I learned how to control my thinking and think truthfully, I discovered that the pain I've shared with you very, very quickly would disappear. Just melt like an ice cube in the sun. It wouldn't be there and it would last for many, many hours or sometimes many, many days. So you will discover that you're holding in thought that which you believe to be real. Here is my real problem. And in this case, a real problem of disease. You're holding it in thought. You're holding in thought what you believe to be your problem of dollars, your problem of supply, your finances. Morning, noon and night, depending on the degree of the trouble we sense we're having, the degree of the lack we think we're experiencing, we will think about this lack. And we'll think about what we can do, what we might be able to do, what we would love to be able to do, but we can't. You know how it goes. We'll think of all these schemes. Well, if I do this, then maybe that'll trigger that, and maybe that'll result in this. And all of that together will result in me having enough dollars to pay for my food this week, or my rent this week, or my mortgage, or my whatever it may be. We scheme. So do you see that thought is filled with that which is our problem and all the scheming that goes into trying to find a solution to that problem? Or if we're lacking friendship or we're lacking a beautiful love relationship and we're feeling a great emptiness and sadness and dissatisfaction and unfulfillment in love. By the degree that we're suffering with this experience, our thought is filled with it. And so on, we could go on through the gamut. Okay. Now you've understood that it is only the holding on to belief and therefore all the thinking of that belief that keeps the problem in our experience. It's only that, because what your experience actually is, what your body actually is, what your supply, your finances actually is right now, your business actually is right now, your relationship and the rest of your world actually is right now, is nothing but the whole of the fulfilled kingdom of spirit, of God. And it's right here, wherever you may be looking or thinking, and so it is only belief and the thinking of belief that's holding the false image of it in your experience. As soon as you are free of belief, which means free of the belief in matter, there's the problem. It's the belief in matter. It's the belief in the ginkengook or whatever it was. The belief in matter is the problem. As soon as we believe in matter, instead of realizing that all is spirit, despite it appearing to be matter, then we're in trouble. In our being, we have belief. And belief can only be about matter. As soon as we realize there isn't any matter, we equally have no belief. Belief doesn't exist in God. Belief needs something to believe. And the only thing that we can believe is matter. Spirit is and is omnipresent and infinite always. Belief doesn't exist in spirit. So you see, we are believing in matter. And now we're firmly in the pairs of opposites. The quick and immediate, when we can do it, solution 
is to be rid of that belief, be rid of matter. Realize that you have no need of matter because matter doesn't actually exist. Your whole world and even that which appears to be something but lacking in much of it or that which appears to be ill or diseased or that which appears to be lonely or insecure isn't. Right now, if you withdraw from it, whatever it is, if you withdraw from the believed situation right now, get out of the pairs of opposites right now, come into spirit, come into paradise as we did at the beginning, you will discover the wholeness of being. And you may sit there, you may ponder and contemplate as we did for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. And you will then begin to feel the peace of your fulfillment, the peace of your truth. And that truth is infinite. That truth is the truth of all of experience, the wholeness, the completeness, the abundance of all of life, of all of supply, of all of love, of all of home and joy and freedom and expression. The oneness, the already completed oneness of being and body, business, love, family, home, supply. And so you feel the peace. And then if you're able to, and you will, as you ponder now this truth, get rid of matter in your being. Get rid of it. Ponder spirit. Not as fulfilled matter, but as fulfilled spirit. And be ever more still and be ever more fed. Allow yourself to be fed by the spirit that's happening for you. It's radiating as you 24 hours a day. It's welling up within and springing out as your whole formation of experience, 24 hours a day. Simply by keeping your awareness now on spirit and getting rid of matter, you are completely open and available to be fed. You're completely there and ready and prepared and are being fed 24 hours a day. Your senses are filled with spiritual awareness, a living reality of spiritual being and mind and world. As you keep on doing this hour by hour, day by day now, keeping matter out of your being, you will discover the quick and infallible harmonizing or completing healing if you like of all experience you catch the import of that Spiritual being has no need of matter. So get rid of the idea or the belief in matter. And in this way, you are not throwing belief into the unconditioned mind. And in this way, therefore, your unconditioned mind is free. You've released God. You've dropped all the veils of belief and there is the fulfillment of spiritual experience, the fulfillment of spiritual mind as spiritual form, always whole, always one, always complete. And you'll witness it coming in the most amazing, sometimes miraculous ways, coming in the most natural ways, expression opening up the response of your world or your 
students or your customers or clients, your marketplace, suddenly opening up and being very much more responsive than they have seemed to be. But remember, or the response of love walking into your life or walking into your day, the response of safety and the response of home and family, whatever it may be, the whole formation of experience begins to open up and respond to you. Because remember, all is God and God seeks you. Always, God is seeking you. Meaning God is seeking the fulfillment of your life as experience, always. So when we get rid of this idea of matter, we've got rid of the only thing that's veiling the fullness of truth as experience. Probably the most important, we keep having these most importance, but today, probably the most important statement to realize, truth to realize, is that spiritual being, which is what you are and what your mind and world is, has no need of matter, because matter doesn't exist. So I hope my embarrassing example works for you. It simply doesn't exist. So don't seek it. Do you see now... Jesus tells us, think not. Don't think about the things you seem to need because actually the things you seem to need in and of their own selves are nothing. They're spirit. They're not matter. They're spirit. Matter doesn't exist. And so think spirit. Your fulfillment comes at a time you think not, Jesus tells the young brides. Your groom comes, your fulfillment comes at a time, at the time you think not. If you're thinking, you're thinking of a human, a physical fulfillment. And then truth cannot be evident to you. You're throwing a veil over what actually is only fulfillment and forever fulfillment. It doesn't matter of what in our named experience. makes no difference. Only fulfillment is. Only oneness is. Only completeness is. So the minute we've taken out this belief in there being something other than spirit, then we've instantly dropped the veil that's disguising that which is already whole and complete and forever whole and complete and can be nothing but from our experience. There it is. There's the quick way. And it's infallible. And you understand why now. All right, for one minute more, let's leave this class by coming back to paradise. Come back to spirit. Holy, holy, holy. And realize as we end the class for the moment that as you feel the peace, you are at one with and as the whole of fulfillment, the whole of God. You've achieved it.
You have your life this second and it's eternal, invariable. You have your wealth this second and it's infinite and invariable. It's omnipresent. You have your love this second. It is invariable. It is eternal. It is divine. It is true. You have your home, your safety, your security, your expression, your business and all your customers, clients, patients, students, all the wisdom, the idea, the intelligence to be able to fully serve those beautiful ones with absolute fulfilling whatever it is you serve, product, service, treatment, teaching. You have the most beautiful friends, companions, joy. You have the most intelligent environment, social activity. The most interesting life, the most giving life. You have all the resources of the infinite this very second to give with, serve with, share with, express with. And this is the truth of you and this is the all of you. You need nothing else than this because this is your wholeness. There isn't anything else. There isn't matter. All right, well, let's take a break here. But I really do feel you feeling your experiencing your spirit. And so let's stay there until we are back for our second class today at 5 p.m. Thank you, thank you.